Well, hey folks, how y'all doing? Welcome back, an old man. Steak on a stick. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, I, I've got a ribeye steak roast. It's basically just ribeye that hasn't been cut up yet. Small roast, like a three pounder. And I was thinking, you know what? Let's try this on rotisserie. We haven't done that in a long time. So we just put it on. If you want to see the setup, stay tuned and we'll show you the setup on the grill and how we got this prepped. But uh, it's going to be cool. Stay tuned. All right, folks, let's take a look at the setup on the Weber. I, I've got uh, my only fire rotisserie on here. And uh, this is the one I got um, without, I got it on sale. I bought it too quick. And uh, it wasn't the one that has the bottom lip on it. And it cooks really, really hot. So I did a mod adding a piece of aluminum flat bar all the way around and uh, screwed it in. And it tightens it up quite a bit. So I'll leave the link below to that. If you bought one of these and you're saying, hey, how can I make this thing cook a little bit uh, slower, you know, instead of being hot all the time. And that's what I did. So you can see we've got, we've got the only fire on there. Uh, I've got my Sloan's here. I've got two wax cubes, one on each corner. And I'm going to light them for both corners. I got uh, some, uh, I got the Kingsford uh, cherry in there with two cherry chunks, dripping griddle. And that's set up and it's uh, kind of a gloomy day here. It might be raining when we're doing this, but uh, you know what? Rain don't stop us. All right, folks, you can see we've got our skewer in there. Uh, we're injecting our rib roast here uh, with some butter that I've melted, just some regular butter. And uh, I've never done this before in a rib roast, so I have no idea whether I'm <laughs> whether this is going to work, but you're going to find out with me. And it's taken some of it. Seems like a lot of it is just oozing out. I did the other side already, so I'm just going to use that as the butter as a rub, I guess. And yeah, there you have it, the rest of the butter. I'm just going to dump on there and just rub all the sides with butter. Oh, man. All right, seen enough? Okay, let's get back to the grill. All right, folks, let's take a quick look here. Our temperatures on the cooled side here are running right around 250 on the hot side. Uh, right around 325. Uh, I've got the vents closed uh, on this thing where the... Where the spit goes through on both sides, there's good openings there, so that gives plenty of ventilation, so no, no need to have vents open. Bottom vent, like I said, has just cracked. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Oh yeah, looking mighty nice, looking mighty nice. Get the cover back on here. We're going to be taking that up to uh, probably right around 115, 120-ish, probably 115-ish internal, and then let her wrap it, let her rest for a little bit before we slice it up, so you stay tuned. All right, folks, there it is off the grill. Uh, I'm going to take everything off here and wrap it real quick and let it rest for a good half an hour, 45 minutes. Give you a look-see when we slice it up. All right, there's about 45 minutes resting in tin foil. Let's uh, slice one up, shall we? Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that, huh? Oh, man. That is... Uh, well, it's medium rare, I would call that, but uh, it sure smells good and sure looks good. Uh, folks, <laughs> I'm going to make a, believe it or not, sandwich out of this. Uh, Tom Horseman at YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it.